Okay, hello everyone, nice to meet you. I'm Alex and this is Jeremy. We're really happy to be here. It's been a very nice fest so far. We had a lot of fun. Excuse me, louder, like this, okay. Uh, yeah, it's been fun, we're glad to be here. Uh, I'm from, uh, we're both architects. I, I, I practice from Montreal and Jeremy practices from Toronto. And, and today we're going to talk to you about Rural Studio, which is a, an extension of Auburn University. Uh, it's an architecture program, design-build architecture program. And we'll be talking as, as well on a, uh, about the 20 Chaos Project, which is a, a project we both contributed uh, to. So, it's loud. The, Yeah. Alright, so much. <laughs> the Rural Studio. So this is this is New Bern, Alabama. It's a small town. It's where the Rural Studio is based. And um, the Rural Studio started. Could you find the Merci Monsieur? The Rural Studio started with uh, uh, the professor Samuel Mockby, and some of you may be aware of him. Uh, he's a famous architect that, that passed away. He passed away 2004 in the heat of Rural Studio, kind of building up steam and developing kind of a um, a name for itself. Next slide. Um, so the way it kind of grew was uh, he was a professor at Auburn Auburn uh, University School of Architecture and. Um, and he lived in uh, Mississippi with his family, and, and uh, every every time he would make the commute to go to school to teach the students, he'd be passing through some of the poorest um, uh, counties in the, st in the state of Alabama, uh, Hale County being one of them, and Hale County is uh, kind of the first county that um, uh, the rural studio started to make their mark, and this being the, the first project, but there's this kind of, um, inconsistency between what the students were learning and not being able to build. Uh, there's kind of a lack of uh, seeing, seeing their visions and their projects through uh, to uh, a, real, a real scale, a real uh, buildability. And um, in addition to this observation of kind of lack of uh, affordable housing and, and, and degrading housing within, within Hale County that he was passing through. And so he started this kind of program by paying Paying for uh, this house out of his pocket, and it's a thesis project, and um, and with kind of a spirit of um, uh, using what materials they had, or and trying to manipulate the materials to serve them best of what was around, what was available, and uh, and also this kind of spirit of the South and how the South is uh, spoken through within the architecture, the spirit of the place. So the place being important, the uh, the kind of sensibility to materiality, and and um, bringing designs from start to finish. And uh, as as the project as the uh, years passed, and each year kind of had either one or two thesis iterations, they tended to be single family houses. Next slide. And um, the refinement of the dis there's kind of this critique of the Royal Studio as being. Um, Initially, there was more Heineken, and after Andrew took over, it became more serious. I don't know if that's, it's sort of an off-the-cuff statement, but there's sort of, a, there's, um, there, there's an interesting observation when you start to think about that as a, as, as a concept of the school as a whole, and what, what that really means, because Sambo was very much a painter and, art, and an artist first. And became became an architect, and it sort of speaks through in terms of how he taught the students and the work that was produced because of that. And and Andrew is 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 a much different person, and he comes from England. Andrew being the current director. That's right. Next slide. Um, so, uh, th so the other observation is that as as the studio kind of plopped itself down in New Bern, Alabama, it's a small community, but. Um, be, being small and being being a kind of a tight community, everyone knows what's going on. Everyone knows what you're doing, what you had for breakfast, uh, whether you ate a Mustang oil, and so through this and through kind of these um, 
intermittent, like building the studio through these uh, projects that they were donating to needy families year after year, it kind of grew and there was a trust that was starting to build between the community and also through that trust, the scale of the project started to grow. Um, for example, the, the baseball diamond. Although uh, there were comments that the baseball diamond was really kind of a, a sneaky way for the rural studio students to start playing on the baseball teams. <laughs> then the, this is the fire hall in New Bern. The, sorry, can you go back? So that last slide, or sorry, the second slide that you've seen where it was the kind of the landscape of New Bern and it's just that highway with the red barn. The red barn is right over here. And um, the Rural Studio Wood Shop is on this side. And there's a small general store and this is the volunteer fire hall that was, that was built the year after I came. This is a, a, a dog, uh, dog pound that's built right beside the um, uh, state prison and um, Boys and Girls Club. There's been three Boys and Girls Clubs built at the Rural Studio. One, the first one, Sambo, was uh, leading the uh, team of students that, that were doing it. There was an issue with um, the, the owner of the land. In any case, uh, the, it, that unfolded into another uh, Boys and Girls Club and it was executed so well that they, they introduced a third one. So Alex is going to talk about the uh, 20K project, which, which was the project that we both uh, worked on. Right. Uh, the 20K House project really came out of the um, intention from the Rural Studio to address in a broader way the, the needs of West Alabama, namely uh, affordable housing. So the idea of the 20K House project uh, is to, it's basically an iter iterative process. Uh, which goal is to identify an ideal typology of a house that could be built for $20,000. An ideal typology that ultimately could be built by a local contractor uh, and replicated widely across the county, which is one of, uh, of the uh, uh, poorest uh, in the state and probably in the United States as well. Uh, why 20K? 20K came out of the uh, a loan that someone can get to build a house, uh, a, a USDA rural loan, is that it? Rural, that's hard to say. Uh, yeah, so, okay, uh, switching, next slide. So this gives you an idea of the, uh, the this process. It started in 2005, uh, and since then, we're in 2019, there has been over uh, 20 houses developed and built. Uh, so as you can see, that there are some similarities along, uh, among these, uh, these prototypes. Every pro prototype basically builds from the one uh, before. Uh, and, and today we're going to talk to you a bit uh, in, we're going to talk to you in more detail about uh, the, these two prototypes, which is the, the second, uh, which I, I designed and built with the team and with the help, obviously, of the whole rural studio, Frank's house. And then Jeremy uh, worked on the trust house. So we, we, were, we worked on these projects at the very early beginnings of the uh, 20K House project. Uh, so uh, Frank's house, uh, as I said before, it, it, every project builds on the project before and are from building another version of the, uh, the first prototype. We rebuilt it as a team to understand every detail of how it's made, the process, everything. Drawn, uh, we drawn some conclusions about that and then came up with a concept that we thought was uh, appropriate, an appropriate response uh, to that. What, what we felt the other, uh, can you go back just a second? What the, the previous prototype lacked was uh, this idea of a houseness. It was, uh, it was a great project in the detail. Uh, it was on budget, but uh, still there was this feeling that uh, it didn't have this feeling of houseness. And it, it's, uh, it reminded uh, people too much of a trailer. And which I didn't what I didn't mention in the beginning is that with a, a, a 20K loan, you typically can buy a trailer, a trailer home, which depreciates at the second that you buy it. And that is obviously poorly built, is very uh, often subject to uh, uh, mold and so on. So, so we really wanted to get away from this, uh, this, this uh, image of the trailer and, and bring houseness back in the, into this, uh, the equation. Uh, one thing that the previous uh, prototype had that was good, appreciated by the client, was a very large 
uh, outdoor screen porch, which is great in the south because of the climate. It's basically another room. So we really wanted to put an emphasis on that. And basically, the reasoning was that, OK, let's build this very small insulated pod and then build a, a giant or as, as big as possible exterior space that can be built for cheap and that can be used to put uh, stuff out. From, from this thought came the, the, the reasoning of, of how are these uh, porches uh, used. So basically, it's the idea that the, the porch in the front is the social, social porch, is the porch that you use to sit down and uh, just uh, take a break in your day and say hi to your neighbors. And then this is more of the, the private porch, where you, the one you actually use as, as a room. Next. Uh, in section, that, that was the, the logic of the project, basically the idea of a pod that is sheltered by a, a roof that acts basically like a parasol, uh, which, which shields, uh, no, which, yeah, yeah, which protects the, uh, the pod from the, the sun. Uh, also, uh, the opening here allows air to take out the, the hot air and then shed water properly. Um, there were obviously a lot of research and development in this project. Uh, this is this research, uh, well this slide is about optimization of material and basically we basically spent a year designing and building a, a 400 uh, square foot house. So you really get into the detail and I, I guess people around uh, among you know what I'm talking about and trying to optimize every detail. So for example this is the design of the truss with one sheet we could do. Uh, 15 connections for the whole uh, building. This was a maximum span for the minimum weight, which is that's a two by four. So we probably did, uh, we took a lot of time to design this truss, but ultimately it, it was worth the time because it was replicated in many projects. Uh, okay, this is the plan. So public porch, private porch, uh, all of these are grouped uh, to minimize uh, plumbing. Uh, we we wanted to make it an open space uh, in the, as a response to the previous prototype that was really enclosed with several rooms. Uh, we, we, we took a very bold approach in opening the, uh, the bathroom to the whole space, which was widely criticized as a move uh, and understandably. But uh, at the same time, we, it was uh, the, well, we could say that the, the, the motto of the rural studio is proceed and be bold, so maybe we're a bit too bold on that, on that move, but it was the idea of, uh, of liberating the space of any, uh, of any uh, walls, and it's, after all, a, a house for one person. Next. So then again, section, this was all open space, insulation in the, on the ceiling. Next. This is the final product. Um, what can I say? Tin, a very uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful material, easy to install, uh, beautiful, reflects light, uh, very durable. So we used it extensively. Minimal use of windows. We only we achieve cross ventilation because it's such a small space with the openings in front and back. Next. Ra radiant barrier in the roof for excuse me for hot climate. You have a radiant barrier under the roof. On the on on the this guy here. No, this, this was wide open. It could be used as, as a storage space. And the insulation is on the top of the pod. Right. Okay, no radiant barrier. No, okay. no this is just uh, trusses and tin. That's it. Next. This is another review of the house with uh, Frank sitting uh, on the porch. Next. And Frank in his house. Chilling. Okay, so... Uh, onto uh, the trust house. So the, uh, the third iteration of the 20K house, we, uh, we were taking some of the learnings from Alex's project and the previous project, and uh, we came to the conclusion that uh, we, wanted, we were interested in two main concepts. One was the trust, and the other was the core. The trust in, in a way where we're already paying for two by fours or two by sixes that are, are going to be framing the walls. So if we manipulate them in a different geometry, we can save on footing costs in the sense that you have the truss that's spanning um, and you're, on, you're only putting footings at uh, two or even uh, three locations along the wall. 
The other, the other idea about the core was that uh, you have this, this piece of furniture that's in the middle of the, of the truss that's dividing up the spaces. It's acting as your wall, but it's also this kind of uh, piece of furniture that you can plug in all of the things that make your house work, like all the kitchen items, all the bathroom items, all the heating and cooling, and the lighting. And, um, and then we were also interested in that being kind of this um, prefabricated, uh, we, were, we were interested in prefabrication on both, both items in the sense that uh, 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 the core being like a CNC piece of machinery that you could uh, cut off site and then tap together with a mallet and, um, and the truss being assembled uh, in pieces on, uh, on a jig and then carted in onto site so that uh, we're curbing the cost of uh, labor because always with these 20k houses the the, the initial idea was that it's ten thousand dollars in in materials, ten thousand dollars in labor, but um, those figures aren't necessarily realistic. And many people within uh, the the rural studio have, have made this comment that the twenty k figure has really become more symbolic than anything. These houses are there. Uh, this I mean, twenty k started uh, two thousand and four or five, and and so it's it's been more than a decade. And uh, cost of materials have gone up, cost of labor has gone up, but we've kept the same name. <laughs> okay, so like I was saying, uh, we, th we thought initially we were doing the truss and the core and it was all one unit, but we noticed that within, um, at least within Hale County, there were many situations where people had a property and it wasn't only them and their partner that was living on that property. They may have their parents living with them, they may have uh, ex uh, 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 kids that are still living at home, and so the idea of having um, multi-generational multi living situations or, and or a secondary unit that you could use as a source of income um, was appealing, and you could curb costs. Instead of having um, two $20,000 $20, houses, we were pushing the idea of a $32,000 house where you have 12000 for one and 20000 for another, and there's a, co there's a cost savings in terms of uh, increasing the scale on both and um, and there's also this vernacular of the dog trot and and having them meet in the middle in the dog trot was kind of this nice move of rectifying both the truss and its long span geometry and it and it's uh, um, it's it's susceptibility for developing a plan that's uh, uh, rectilinear and, and short short in this section but long in this section um, and I, I should also mention that uh, th this is the core here. You have, you have your more private space, more public space, and uh, the screened-in porch where this also becomes a an exterior room under the tin roof. Uh, it's especially nice in the um, Alabama rain that tends to happen every day at 4.30 in the summer where the humidity just builds up, builds up to the point where it just storms for 45 minutes. And if you're under that porch, it's this beautiful, um, experience anyway and then this is kind of like the smaller version of the core with as you circle in it becomes more private next slide uh, so this is a slide that speaks to kind of uh, these assembled pieces that we did in the jig and then we carted in on on the back of um, trailer and then we hoisted them in place using the Bobcat uh, we had these custom um, metal welded metal details which um, uh, I think if you were to pay a laborer to do them, because some of the connections had uh, upwards of 12 bolts, 12 uh, carriage bolts, it, it could be cumbersome, but um, uh, we thought it looked nice. Next slide. <laughs> there's a lot of like, uh, you know, there's like small moments within the project where the project itself is really uh, about all, all of these things trying to serve dual purpose. Like if you if you have to build the wall, can it do these other things? If you have to build the core, can it do multiple iterations so that you're really paying for the material once and then it's doing a number of different uh, things for you? But um, every now and then, like like that footing detail, uh, we want to kind of throw in, I don't know, something interesting. It's an opportunity to do something interesting. Um, so this kind of depicts some of the process of assembly of the envelope. And um, uh, we had a thought of um, sort of inward looking and the corrugated tin and then uh, adding that to semi-translucent um, corrugated plastic to kind of reveal the truss, but then also at the same time uh, 
um, have a sense of privacy. So you're letting light in, but it's not necessarily um, uh, exposing yourself to the street. And uh, next slide. Then this speaks to um, yeah, Bizarre. <laughs> There's a, like um, each of these pieces were cut on the CNC uh, router at um, at Auburn University, and then we drove the dually to the site and assembled the core using a, a mallet. And um, and you have these kind of access panels to the um, the utilities on the inside of the core. Next slide. Uh, this kind of depicts sort of our our imagined, you know, when we were at the drawing stage and we're kind of thinking about um, uh, how this thing's going to go together. And at this stage, we were considering kind of, you know, a, an entrance on one side and an entrance on the other. And I think that had an influence to uh, Alex's project where there was kind of an importance of the idea of a house, the way a child draws it, has this pitched roof. So when you're looking at that, that being the entrance, but uh, we kind of threw that away and, and wanted to celebrate the dog trot. That way you, you just have one stair and the two meet in the middle. We thought that was uh, uh, better economically and then also it just worked better with the, uh, the overall plan. And it's an interior shot. And the clients. Thank you, everyone. Um, are we done? Are we taking questions? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm interested in knowing um, specific to very hot climates, unrelentingly hot climates, um, like for overhang in the roof and for venturi effect or not, or uh, without a vapor barrier, I mean, radiant barrier under the roof. I'm just really interested in that for rural studio designing. Right. If you could elaborate on any of that, I'd be... On the, on the way, uh, the composition of the walls and, and whatnot? Hot climate building. Hot climate building. Well, if, if, we, if we take this one, for example, and the, the previous one, it's uh, how we addressed it. And the, these two projects was really the concept of a, an over arching roof that is basically just acts as a, a that stops sunlight and creates shade on a volume that is insulated right so the basically roof, the roof itself is not insulated it's not it's and not so the, the, the heat just con penetrates the convection heat i guess it's called Right yes, yeah, basically, the, some. Uh, what's nice about this metal roof is that some of the light is reflected. Obviously, there there is some heat that penetrates beyond the metal, but beyond the metal, there's nothing. It's a vented space, so the air can go through it and take out this this hot air that gathers up there, and uh, basically, uh, it, it creates a, a temperature in this space uh, that is. Uh, uh, it, it, it creates a distance between the insulated pod and the, uh, the, the heat source, which is the sun. So that's, that was, uh, and it proved to be a good strategy. Uh, the, air, I th the air temperature is the same as outside, basically. Yes, exactly. And, and the house winds up with less light naturally light correct? Right? Uh, no, the natural light comes in uh, from the windows and, and, and the, the doors. Uh, well, in this project, it's a bit different. Uh, light comes in uh, as well on the uh, through these openings, uh, which has a polycarbonate here, uh, which uh, they experimented with side windows in this prototype. In, in, in the house we designed, there weren't any side windows because it's so small that you can have light coming in the front and in the back, and it's enough. Same with cross ventilation. Uh, passive, do you want to elaborate on that? Oops. We had uh, this product that was a ceramic panel that was mounted on the side of the core and there's one on either side and uh, because our, our value was um, significant, we, think we sprayed the uh, 
the truss with uh, uh, spray foam insulation, and um, and uh, it was easy to heat. And although I, I do I do think it's uh, we were unsuccessful in terms of um, um, uh, cooling, even though. Like Alex was saying, the roof functions very well in terms of like creating a, an air pocket between the insulation and, and the heated roof space up above. The, the client still had an air conditioner stuck in the, um, in the window. And uh, it may have spoken more to, um, can you go back a slide? It may have spoken more to like the, um, uh, the culture, the culture of having an air conditioner and, and being able to cool it to the temperature you want. We did provide uh, ceiling fans on both sides, and when I was, I ran out of money at the end of the program, and I was living in the house. So, and it was the end of August; it was really hot, and and uh, I was very comfortable. It was it was easy to keep cool, and um, I rarely had to use the uh, the ceiling fans. So, I don't know. But what what I would say is that uh, we did toy around with the idea of having these operable. And uh, which would have been much more successful in terms of getting cross ventilation, and we did have our openings were on this side and then on the opposite side. So there was cross ventilation happening on the long axis, but it's favorable to do it on the short axis in, in order for efficiencies. But we th we thought with the, the fan the fans on both both the private side and the public side, it was um, sufficient, and I th I thought it was sufficient too, even though despite the client putting in an air conditioner. Yeah, thanks. I'd like to thank you both for coming along and doing a wonderful presentation.